Hey guys, welcome to the Danny Bossa podcast. In this video, you will learn what you can be doing to minimize the bad estrogens in your body to improve your overall androgenic ratio. So stay tuned for my part two interview with Dave Lee. Hey guys, we are back with Dave Lee. So Dave, the subject of estradiol and estrogens in general in the TRT community have elicited some of the more heated arguments, I guess you could say, that you can find online. And, and being as vocal as I've been on the subject, I've accumulated a massive amount of haters for even mentioning that taking aromatase inhibitors are not ideal for health and not necessary for men on testosterone replacement therapy. So what's your take on the subject? Yeah, so like I, what I think is really interesting, man, is like I don't know about you, but I understand why guys want to take aromatase inhibitors. I get it, but it's not the right tool for the toolbox. But I, I think what they're looking at is they are aware that there are estrogenic problems in their body, but it has nothing to do with endogenous aromatase production. But I understand like when guys are like, I want to take an AI and I say why, and they list off the reasons, I'm like, I get it. But what I think is going on is I think that we've got this problem where it has nothing to do with natural estrogen production. It has nothing to do with aromatase problems. The problem that we're having is it's multifactorial, but I think a big part of it is the external environmental estrogens. Um, and this is what are called xenoestrogens primarily. Um, and I think the main issues are the plastics, the pollution and the pesticides, uh, three Ps. Um, and I think if I had to pick one, if I had to go, which one's the biggest culprit, I'd probably say the pesticides, but that's just how I feel about it. I think it's all a factor. But what we don't know is what are the xenoestrogens doing in the body? We know that they're having actions on the estrogen receptor. We know that they're much stronger than actual estradiol in terms of binding, but we also know that it outcompetes endogenous estrogen. So when your body is flooded with external estrogenic compounds that are more powerful than the natural estrogens your body make, and they outcompete those molecules, and your male body is not designed to actually be able to process this amount of estrogen, you're going to have problems. But the solution is not taking an AI. It's working out and going, okay, what is going on and why is this a problem? Because what I think happens is, and this is going back to why people use SERMs for a PCT. So, you know, if you're if you want to restart your natural testosterone production, you do that by using a SERM. And the theory behind this is that it blocks the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus with sig signals to the brain saying, hey, there's not enough testosterone in the body because estrogen is an end product of testosterone metabolization. So then the, the brain will upregulate production of LH. And this is what we see work well in, in uh, you know, PCT. So what happens when you have a whole bunch of external estrogens come into a young man going through puberty and then all these external estrogens bind to the same receptors and the, the, the body goes, hey, plenty of estrogen here. What does that mean? It means that it's coming from plenty of testosterone. So let's downregulate our production of testosterone because that's what happens when you go on testosterone. That's why you get a downregulation of your natural production. So I think what's happening is all these guys are getting bombarded with these xenoestrogens. It's sending a message to the brain to say, hey, there's plenty of hormones in the body. We don't need to make more. And then what happens? You get guys who are 19, 20, 21 years old doing everything right, like to a T, to a point that most people wouldn't even be able to comprehend. And their total testosterone is like bottom quartile of the range. I'm just saying the range because we're all using different units, but bottom quartile of the range. They've got low T symptoms. They feel like shit. Like they feel like how these guys are feeling when they're 70 and 80 mm. because they have the same T levels as 70 and 80. But the problem is that when you go through puberty and, and your, your early 20s, you're supposed to be exposed to a flood of androgens to masculinize the body and to form you properly. That's what puberty is. That's, that's why puberty you know, takes place the way it does. So if you're not getting maxed out with the amount of hormones that you're supposed to get during that developmental phase, you're not developing properly physically or psychologically as a man. And that's what's happening when these guys are 20, 21, 22. They're like, oh, I want to take an AI because I know I'm more feminine than I should be. And I say, yeah, you are. But the solution is not blocking the aromatase. It's putting the test in. Because the problem is, right, like, like I, I know like some people who say, well, everyone should take a serum because that way we can block the environmental estrogen from binding with the receptor. And I'm like, the theory, that, that, that sounds great. The problem is it doesn't work. It makes people feel like shit because then they're getting fucking clomid binding their receptors as well. But 
what we want to look at is going, okay, well, what can we do to either prevent these environmental xenoestrogens from getting into the body or what can we do to eliminate them faster or get them out of the body? And that's you know, the main question I, I got you to ask Serrano uh, mm-hmm. because that's, I think, one of the biggest things that we're dealing with at the moment is like, how do we actually deal with this big problem that all these guys are having? And I think all these chicks are having as well. Like, I don't know about you, but like, I'm 29. The amount of women I know who are my age or younger or a bit older with polycystic ovarian syndrome or endometriosis is fucking ridiculous. Like, I know more women with problems with their cycles than not. And just like I probably know more men with low testosterone than Gosh. with optimal natural testosterone levels. Absolutely. I mean, it is a huge fucking endocrine disruption that we've got going on. And then that's one of the reasons why I'm so big on liver health is because I think supporting the liver is the best thing we can do because we're going, okay, we're getting bombarded with all this dog shit that our body cannot uh, process properly. Well, how does the body eliminate it by the liver? So I think the best thing we can do for now is supporting liver, which is why Eric Serrano mentioned glycine. Um, it's why I give a lot of my guys glutathione and other liver support as well because it's just the best we can. So that's one factor. And then you've got the other factor, which is the change in nutrition, which is we've now got multiple generations of bloodlines, which have basically been consuming vegetable oil instead of animal fat. So what they've done is they've traded cholesterol, A, E, D, and K, which are fat soluble vitamins, which all have hormonal effects in the body. And we've replaced that with vegetable oil, which is a high in omega-6 fatty acid, which is pro-inflammatory, disrupted the omega-6 to omega-3 balance. But we've also removed A, E, D, K, and cholesterol, which are the five most important nutrients in the body for hormone production. Because pregnenolone is created from cholesterol, and then the enzymatic process from uh, cholesterol to pregnenolone is mediated by vitamin A. So you remove those two things, you don't have any fucking hormones. But the problem for me was... I had chronic nerve pain, which was driving up inflammation. I was severely hypothyroid that I had no idea. And I had fatty liver disease. Like I had these three things that were all causing issues with my inflammation and metabolism in my body that I was getting all these symptoms that I was pointing at estrogen going, hey, like I don't feel masculine. I don't have a good energy levels. I feel crap. And then I fixed all these things, focused on improving my liver. And now I feel great. Yeah. So, so guys, um, for those of you who are wondering what aromatase inhibitors are, um, these were drugs that were created for women originally with certain types of cancers because there's certain types of cancers that can feed off of estrogens. And estradiol in itself doesn't necessarily cause cancer, but certain types of cancers can feed off of it in other estrogens. Just like you can't create fire with oxygen, but once you have fire, it can be fueled by oxygen. Okay, you see where I'm going with this. So lowering estradiol in women is an absolutely terrible idea for health and the the aromatase inhibitor in itself is toxic but this is done because the woman has cancer and we don't want her to die um in contrast men on trt don't have this concern so taking an aromatase inhibitor makes zero sense because why take a toxic drug that is going to lower one of the more protective uh, hormones in the body and as dave was saying using it has no effect whatsoever on things like phytoestrogens and xenoestrogens because those things are already estrogens okay and like what he's saying here is exactly the type of things that i see with a lot of the guys i've worked with because they're obsessing over their total testosterone levels and their estradiol levels now total testosterone in and of itself doesn't really tell you much of anything without the context of things like sex hormone binding globulin and free testosterone levels. And estradiol being an intricate hormone in men makes it so that the serum levels don't really reflect what's going on much in the tissue because all we're seeing is a little bit that falls, leaks back out of the serum, out of the tissue, I should say, back into the serum. And most of these guys are getting their information from physicians who aren't really caught up on the subject or things like Facebook groups and forums where they've essentially learned from you know bodybuilders who are taking uh, synthetic anabolics and then using these aromatase inhibitors to block the conversion of these synthetic compounds into mostly synthetic estrogens, which is simply not the case for men on TRT. With the exception, by the way, of the Facebook group owned by Stephen Devos called TRT and Hormone Optimization. Um, now, it's surprisingly rare that I see complete labs, including both thyroid function and liver function, because as Dave was saying, Estrogens are metabolized directly in the liver. So if your liver function is bad, your clearance of these phytoestrogens and xenoestrogens will also be bad. 
And this applies to both men on TRT and guys who are not on TRT uh, and women, really. It applies across the board. But still, every guy out there gets, who, you know, who gets some degree of issues on his protocol is either pointing to the protocol as being wrong or unoptimal for things like either insufficient frequency of injection or maybe he's too much, taking too much testosterone a week or too little testosterone a week, or they're pointing to estradiol as being the culprit with the only real solution that they know of to take a aromatase inhibitor because it's really the only thing they know how to do. So Dave, question to you is, do you ever use aromatase inhibitors or AIs with your clients? The solution is not to block your internal production of aromatase because if anything, like the estradiol is the only thing you've got to actually oppose the xenoestrogens. Like that's, it's not, and what I say to these guys, I'm like, your problem, it has nothing to do with too much estradiol. You have definitely too much estrogenic compounds in your body, but it has nothing to do with your endogenous production because that is not what's causing the issues. And when you look at this old research, like, um, I'm very big on uh, a guy called Ray Pete. Like I really like a lot mm -hmm. of his work. I don't take it as gospel like a lot of his followers do because I'm not a moron, but I really <laughs> like how he approached this idea of uh, like a bioenergetic approach to the metabolism and, and to health, basically saying you want to have a healthier metabolism to burn more energy, to be a healthier vessel. I really like that. And he, he's very, very against estrogen. He thinks estrogen is the worst thing in the world, but he also doesn't promote taking an AI because he knows that's not the solution either. But a lot of his research was done before they were able to differentiate between biological estrogens and external estrogens. So it was all lumped in together. So obviously when you look at that in context and you go, okay, if, if you lump estradiol, estrone, estriol, and a whole bunch of xenoestrogens in one pool, and then you use that as, you know, to observe, that's going to cause you problems for sure. But when you actually separate the two and realize, ah, this and this actually do very different things in the body, but they work on the same receptors, then we can go, ah, okay, maybe we're actually pointing the finger at the wrong thing here. And I think a lot of guys work it out because they take the AI. Like, a lot of the time when guys say, like, I want to try taking an AI, usually I say, you know, don't do it. But I don't try to talk them out of it because a lot of the time men need to learn things on their own. Like if I, if I tell, if I, if I have my girlfriend over and I say, don't touch the stove, it's hot she's not going to touch the stove. If I have you over and I say, don't touch the stove, it's hot. Part of you wants to touch the stove to see how hot it is and to see if you can handle the heat. A hundred percent. And then you'll learn, okay, no, I, I fuck what Dave said, but I actually learned not to touch the stove. It is hot. That's how men are. Like we are experiential learners. It, it's, it's just the way that we're built. So when I say to a guy, don't take an AI, it's not what you need. And he goes, I'm going to take it anyway. I go, okay. Like, I'm like, that's how you're going to learn because, and then they will subjectively learn, have the experience and go, oh, this is not what I need. And a lot of guys do need to go through that themselves because you know, they'll, they'll sit here, listen to us and they'll go, fuck these guys. I'm the exception to the rule, which I mean, that's how you learn, right? Because for all we know, you could be. So, I mean, give it a fucking go, but I do encourage people not to do it because it is poison to the body, but some people need to learn from doing. And usually what happens when they take these AIs is then they get the negative symptoms of low estradiol and stuff like, you know, joint pain, like they become like cognitively inept, like all these kind of issues. But then they've still got the symptoms of the high xenoestrogens as well. So it doesn't fix the problems that they're trying to fix. It just creates more problems. But a lot of the time there's this little sweet spot where they get a jack in free testosterone and they go, ah, oh, this is perfect. And then they go, oh, I overshot, I crashed my estrogen. I need to change the dose to this man and blah, 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 blah. And it's just, it ends up in a fool's errand because all these guys in these forums go, oh, no, the dose is this, you should do this, you should get your number to this. And no one ever feels good.